connective tissue that are attached need to be dissected carefully off the dorsal aspect of his penis. And then once you begin to see the paired multiurethral glands, that will then identify that you are as proximal as you need to be. You can stop. Any further dissection is not going to result in a larger diameter opening in his urethra. So, just stop. Go back to the tip of his penis. Take a pair of straight Stevens tenotomy scissors. Place those scissors into his urethra. Cut up through the blue part of his urethra until it turns that kind of whitish color. And now you're in the more collagen dense pelvic urethra and perineal urethra. And you can see that this area is a bit higher density in, in collagen, which means it holds sutures better. So getting up to the bulging and mesial glands is critical to making sure he has a large enough orifice, making sure he has adequate collagen density to be able to support the sutures that are going to anchor his urethra to his skin. When you're placing your sutures in, make sure that when you put your first Suture located at this in this location, 40, about 45 degrees from the circle. Leave the ends long and put a hemostat on those ends to act as a retractor. Very important if you're doing it by yourself. Because you have nobody to help you, this hemostat will help you tremendously because it offers traction and counter-traction that will allow you to open his urethra so that you can access and identify the various layers that you've cut through, which will guarantee that when you suture the urethral mucosa, that you will actually be suturing urethral mucosa because you can see it. Notice how that urethral mucosa is a very shiny, glistening surface. That shiny, glistening surface has to touch the skin. For every gap that you leave behind or between the sutures, that will fill with scar tissue, heal by second intention. You'll get contraction and potentially put the patient at risk for stenosis. So make absolutely sure that you have shiny urethral mucosa attached to skin throughout your entire urethroscopy. Used to be that drain boards were kind of a big deal in that people would be very careful to try to make the drain boards as large as they could, which would allow that to stretch the urethra out. We have since found that that is not only not necessary, but it's not advisable because it may uh, increase the chances of breakdown. Cats do not need an extensive drain board. So that's a good thing for us because we don't have to go through any of the special surgical techniques to try and encourage a separate and special drain board. Any questions on perineal urethrostomies performed using this uh, specific?